On this day in the year 1909, Robert Peary claims he and his team reached the North Pole, becoming the first recorded people to do so. Well, Peary grew up in Portland, graduated from Bowdoin College. The North Pole, if you're not familiar, is at the 90th parallel. Halfway between the North Pole, of course, and the equator would be the 45th parallel, which runs right through Maine, hitting towns like Perry and Rangeley. The boat that Perry led to the North Pole was made in Maine at a shipyard that's now gone. It was on Verona Island off the coast of Bucksport. Leaving in July of 1908, it took nine months to sail the SS Roosevelt, as it was called, to its milestone destination. It is not, however, a straight shot like it looks like on the map. There are dangerous icebergs and hundreds of miles of sea ice to navigate. Well, in 2005, Bucksport celebrated the construction of the Roosevelt, and our Gemma Waite was there. It was so tough, it's so rugged. Built in Bucksport, the SS Roosevelt holds a solid place in the town's history books. One specific uh, piece of uh, artifact that's very, very interesting is my great-grandfather wrote day-to-day -day diaries that detailed the voyage from start to finish. George Wardwell's great-grandfather worked as the chief engineer on board the ship alongside Admiral Robert Perry. A century after the ship's launch, Wardwell shares artifacts from the Roosevelt's Arctic voyage to the North Pole. So historic, one photographer had the foresight to capture it on film. Historians say the launching of the Roosevelt drew thousands of people to Bucksport as the ship set sail from that boat ramp across the river on Verona Island, which at the time was the McCain Dick shipyard. It was <coughs> at 12.35 today, 100 years ago, uh, my grandfather was on the, <coughs> on the Roosevelt when they launched it. George Sawyer's grandfather was just 20 years old when he got a job at the shipyard. And he went to work on the ship itself as a rigger. George Sawyer's grandfather, they gave him two dollars a day because for swinging around like a monkey building the rigging. Earl Morrill worked on the ship too. He built this model version of the Roosevelt. This was not easy. You know, I mean, this, this was a tough critter to build. Morrill says while more than 200 vessels were built in Bucksport, the Roosevelt was a ship like no other. Well, she was fitted with a uh, twin water tube boilers, which were state of the art at the time, and also a thousand horsepower triple expansion steam engine. A ship made by Maine shipbuilders that ended up making history. That was Gemma Waite reporting from 2005. Now, at the beginning of this segment, we said that Admiral Robert Peary claimed to have reached to the North Pole. That's because there's some dispute about it. The claim is largely accepted, but as Amanda Hill found out, there is some room for doubt. There were many different countries, explorers from many different countries trying to get there, um, and so it was seen as a, a nationalistic achievement. Was he the first? Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, assuming, you know, there is, of course, debate over whether he got there at all, because it's not on land, it's on floating, moving sea ice. He couldn't put a stake in the ground and say, this is the North Pole and I was here, which you can do at the South Pole, because it is on land, but the sea ice is always moving. And so there was no uh, objective observer available to say, yes, there they are at the pole. And so it's always going to be something that you can contest. So the SS Roosevelt went on to become a tugboat for various private and government agencies until it essentially just fell apart in the Panama Canal Zone in 1937. Big mystery. I didn't I realize know. about the whole planting of the flag part. Yeah. Pretty cool, That's though. A shame.